let's talk about the hot story of the week. So there's a guy, Mike Brown. Yeah. They call him Pluto Killer. Yes. He's he's the not guy. My favorite guy. He's really. the guy at Caltech who said Pluto. It's not a planet. It's a small rock. Well, he and our next guest, Constantine Batigan, who is an assistant professor of planetary science at Caltech, believe there is a planet, another planet out beyond Pluto. Professor Batigan joins us right now on Skype. Constantine, it's good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for having me on. You're 12 years old. How could you be a professor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not actually 12. It's just... Uh, You're very you know, youthful. It's just all the preservatives I took. <laughs> I'm actually 97. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Science. What do Planetary think science is a yeah. young yeah. science. So there we go. I was saying before the show, boy, I would love to have a business card that says Professor of Planetary Science Caltech. That's very prestigious. Uh, but anyway, I'm so glad you could join us. Is it Batigan? Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Batigan is good. Um, so, Pluto, not a planet. Not a planet, no. That's fine. I can live with that. But then to add insult to injury, it seems you have found a ninth planet that is farther out than Pluto. Or at least right. evidence for it. What is the evidence? Look, the evidence is that if you look uh, at the most distant orbits that we have in the solar system, right, just the, uh, the furthest objects that we know of, they all sort of swing out into the same overall direction, uh, you know, and on, their, on their highly elliptical orbits. Right, so th that's uh, what you're seeing in this, in this video, right? Uh -huh. All these purple orbits are all sort of oriented in the same direction. And moreover, all of these orbits lie in sort of the same overall plane. The only way that, the only reasonable explanation for this behavior is that what we're seeing is gravitational confinement due to a, a distant uh, massive object. Oh, Constantine, what's the, the, the multifold test for something being a planet? I know it has to orbit the sun. It has to have sufficient mass to be able to clear debris out of its orbit. Oh, what was the rule that got Pluto kicked out of the club? <laughs> it was actually the second one you mentioned. It's clearing out its orbit. See, what we mean when we say a planet, a planet is something that is gravitationally dominant, something that completely kind of rules over its neighborhood. Pluto fails this test. Pluto's orbit is entirely a slave to the gravitational influence of Neptune. On the other hand, Planet Nine, the only reason we know that it's there is through the gravitational influence that it exerts on its local planetary neighborhood. So kind of the definition of planet is built into the method that we've used to infer its existence. That, that makes a lot of sense if, right. as, as the Earth travels in its orbit. Uh, that's why we have meteors and meteorites. Mm -hmm. We're pulling stuff into uh, our atmosphere by our gravitational uh, uh, pull. That sounds to me like this new planet is actually has more mass than Pluto does. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, the, the mass of this object is 5,000 times greater than wow. that of Pluto. <laughs> right? So, so it, it feels literally zero insecurity when it's compared with Pluto. So, in you know, fact, it's fairly past. large. Uh, in this video, it looks like it's bigger than Earth, but it's, uh, but it's somewhere between Earth and Jupiter. It's a big planet. Uh, yeah. So, in fact, it's about 10 times the mass of the Earth. And uh, what's interesting is... Uh, it's a new mass range for the solar system, but when it comes to planets around other stars, this is the most common type of planet that we find. Most other sun-like stars ah. don't host planets as small as the Earth, neither planets as massive as Jupiter. Ten Earth masses it is right in that most common range. So perhaps Planet Nine constitutes our link to the extrasolar world, if you will. Is it out in the Kuiper Belt? It's pretty far out. Uh, you know, it's it's further out than what we usually think of as the Kuiper Belt. Uh, you know, when we say the Kuiper Belt, what usually comes to mind is, is sort of the region that is actually inhabited by Pluto and and all of its friends. Um, in the most this this object, uh, sort of to compare, you know, whereas Pluto sits at roughly forty times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, this object is sitting at about 1,000. So it's in the very extended uh, extended Kuiper Belt, if you will. It's in the extended scattered disk of the Kuiper Belt. Wow. 
Now, uh, Constantine, uh, we, we are a tech channel here, and our folk love their stats. So can you give us the stats of this ninth planet? Obviously, it has a much different orbit than we're used to from the rest of, of the planets in the solar system. But mm -hmm. to tell us, is it a rocky planet? Is it, is it a gaseous planet? We know that it's a large planet. But uh, break it down for us. For, for, the, for the geeks and the astro geeks among us, what do we okay. need to know about this, this new visitor? All right, so um, in terms of physical appearance, I think this object is closest to Uranus and Neptune. It probably, out of its 10 Earth masses, has most of its mass in, in ice and rock. So I'm, go I'm going to just speculate that eight to nine Earth masses are in, uh, in ice and rock, about one Earth mass in a hydrogen helium envelope. So this is a very extensive atmosphere if you sort of compare it with something like the Earth, where the Earth's atmosphere is tiny. I mean, it's like a like a skin of an apple. Um, so it's not a gas the, giant, but it's pretty gassy. Yes, yeah, so it's a, this is a uh, this is a dwarf gas giant. A dwarf if you will. gas this, giant. <laughs> oh, okay. I like it. This is new. Yeah. This is new. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in terms of its orbit, uh, and this is the exciting thing, it's got an eccentricity of 0 0.6, which means that at closest passage, it comes in at right around 250 astronomical units, so 250 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. At most distant passage, where we think it currently resides, it's about 1,000. So in fact, it's, uh, it's a little bit greater than 1,000 AU, so it's really way out there. And its orbit is also uh, substantially inclined with respect to the plane of the solar system. We think on the order of 30 degrees. So this is a very wild Interesting. object you know, when, when we compare it with the clockwork-like orbits of our own kind of solar system that we're used to. But as it turns out, it is, it is pretty normal if you compare it with the galactic planetary album. What instruments did you use to detect this? Uh, the instrument that we used is a is a giant computer cluster, uh, which <laughs> which is housed in uh, in the bottom of our building called Fram, and uh, or or, or CI, CI Terra, I think, is the the formal name of it. Yeah, I mean, this object, this is a uh, we would not have been able to derive the the orbit of of the planet without these large scale computational resources. That's so amazing. I, I noted that your father uh, was a uh, uh, accelerator physicist uh, at the mm -hmm. Moscow Engineering Physics Institute. Um, so you're you're come from a lineage of uh, scientists. <laughs> uh, I think that's that's pretty cool uh, that you, well, thank you that you followed yeah. kind of in your father's footsteps, although in a unique a unique part of phys uh, physics. Yeah, well, you know, they my parents never really exerted pressure on me to to do anything more than anything else and in fact I was going to be a I was going to be a musician uh until so maybe halfway through college. Oh, that so, explains yeah. why you went to UCSC. Yeah, 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 I absolutely <laughs> loved my time at UCSC. That was the that was the key. My dad yeah. was a professor there, so uh, and I uh, Oh yeah. I grew up oh, awesome. in in a uh, geodesic dome in, uh, in Kresge <laughs> College. But that's another story for another time. Mm, My dad did not lead me into this career, I can tell you right now. <laughs> so this is exciting. Ninth Planet. Um, now, does who gets the naming rights? Can we call it Batigan? Uh, you can call it Batigan. Oh. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, as a... Realistically, you know, something as, as as epic as naming of a planet, you know, that hopefully should be left not to a couple guys in SoCal, you know, drinking coffee and, and coming <laughs> I, I, to a decision. Why not? I don't know. Planet, I think it should be. Planet Constantine has a nice ring to it. Oh, I'm, Constantine. I'm saying, that's, that's nice, that's too. Uh, but, you know, to this end, my, my inbox is blowing up <laughs> with emails, is. you know, the, <laughs> with people demanding to call it David Bowie. And, you know, oh, no, no, I'm starting, no, no, no. It's, it's starting to grow on me. Planet well, Bowie. Or we could confuse everyone and rename it Pluto. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's another. You know, there's a, in fact a, a a play on words you can do where it's Pluto, where the toe is T O T uh, like T -W -O. French. T yeah. No, it's T W O like Pluto. Oh, Pluto. 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 Whoa, Pluto. So, yeah. how will we know it's a planet? What now is the next step to kind of solidify this guess? So, you know, what we have published is is a is a roadmap, if you will. We've published the prediction of the orbit. The we've published all of the theoretical evidence that it's there. Uh, the the astronomical hunt for Planet Nine is now on, and in yeah. fact, we are uh, taking 
a part in this hunt. We are uh, going to the telescope uh, to, to scan the skies for it. We hope that some of our colleagues will join this quest and uh, and we'll find it you know it's we not estimate too far, that it's not too far to see you know it's actually it's fascinating uh, at the furthest point in its orbit it's about 24th magnitude which me which is right at the technological kind of oh, cutting wow. edge right now so oh, wow. we're just at a point where we can detect it if it's at at its furthest point so this means it's going to be hard it might take years it might take you know we estimate it might take five years or so but but we'll get there. It's not impossible. And I presume at its distance from the sun, it's probably pretty cold. Yeah. In fact, it's uh, the all of the heat that it generates. It generates from its own intrinsic uh, gravitational contraction. So it's uh, about forty Kelvin, oh. and that's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's cold colder than Siberia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the winter time, I, 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 I want I want one last geek question before before we have to send you off, and that would be uh, obviously there's going to be a lot of attention being play, paid to Planet Nine, but using your uh, planetary science background, how much further out could we get and still theoretically have a planet bound by the sun's gravity? Because I, I got to be thinking Planet Nine's got to be on that outer edge. No, uh, it it totally isn't. Um, in fact, Planet Nine has a semi-major axis, the size of its orbit is about approximately speaking, a thousand astronomical units, the sun's gravitational influence ends at about a hundred thousand. Whoa. There's plenty of room out there. Huh. So there's room for huh. Planet 10. Huh. Hey, it's yeah, been... there's, no ev there's no evidence for Planet 10, but there's room for it, yeah. Uh, it's been so great to talk to you. Congratulations on uh, this uh, discovery. It's just fascinating. And based on well, your T-shirt, you. I think we should call it Planet Umagumma. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, I think it'd be a great name for a planet. No? All right. Uh, yeah, I, I feel you, man. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me with that axe, Constantine. Constantine Batigan, he is a, a professor of planetary science at Caltech, and it's really great to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.